It's October 21st, 2015, which means that we have finally caught up to the future timeline in Back to the Futures. I'm so excited to see the flying cars and hoverboards! Oh, we don't have any of those. Not yet. Well, they are working on one of the hoverboards. It's being worked on. There's the tech, we just haven't implemented it yet. Or perfected it. Or really seen that it is widely available to the public. Will it be? I have no idea. Anyway, it's very exciting, isn't it? I remember watching Back to the Future when I was a kid, and why am I talking about Back to the Future in a gaming show? Huh, sorry about that. Let's talk about games. And the main question today is, is Hideo Kojima still working at Konami? I have no idea. No one seems to. A few days ago we got reports that he had finally quit and that there was a farewell party. Now Konami is saying that no, he hasn't quit, he's just on vacation. The party was just a vacation party because who doesn't get a party when they go on a vacation? No one. No one gets a party when they go to a vacation, Konami? Do you expect us to believe this? I don't. You don't. Probably Hideo Kojima doesn't either. But hey, maybe he really is working. Maybe not. We will find out in the future, possibly in December. I hope he is no longer working, because with all the grief that Konami has given him and all the fans in recent years, it's kind of difficult to believe that he'll take all this stuff sitting down. Let's hope that he has finally freed himself and will now do some more interesting stuff than lay out a new iteration of Metal Gear Solid every couple of years. Not that Metal Gear Solid 5 isn't any good, it probably is, haven't played it yet, I'm probably the only one. Well, I can think of at least one more person who hasn't, but it was a very good game, I'm sure of it. And seeing as Konami are planning to do Metal Gear Solid sequels, they would need Kojima to do them. To do them right, to do them the way the fans expect Metal Gear Solid to be. But if Kojima has left, well, the next few sequel sequels in Metal Gear Solid might not be at all as good as the fandom hopes. We shall see. We shall find out soon enough. On to our next piece of news. It's exciting to know that Star Wars Battlefront is getting some news that are not... We don't have this feature! Well, they did announce that they won't have private matches at launch, so if you want to play one versus one with your friends, sorry buddy, but you are screwed. Royally. What Star Wars Battlefront will, however, have is... Say it with me. Three new characters. Huh, that was a weird pause between three and new. Anyway, it will have three new characters you can play with, playable heroes, once you pick the buff, that is. Joining the ranks of Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker and Boba Fett, we've got Princess Leia, the first support character, Han Solo, who is going to be like an uber rebel person, and Emperor Palpatine, who will, of course, Use his lightning fingers! Huh, that was probably one of the more feminine things I've done today? Right. It's very refreshing knowing that you can now buy a game for $110 and get to play with three more characters. Heroes. Villains. Whatever you want to call them. Heroes and villains. Movie characters. Yes. If you have been planning to get PlayStation 4 for a while, just keep waiting until Christmas time. New price cuts are coming both in the United Kingdom and in the European Union. The price cuts in the European Union will be 50 euro, going from 400 to 350, which is really quite a great price, and I am looking forward to picking one up anytime in the next year. Yeah. Money side. Really, that price cut is great and it will only help Sony's increasing sales. They have once again proven that they can beat Microsoft 
practically any day now with a stronger hardware and more interesting software as well with obviously a far, well I don't know how far larger but it certainly is a larger player base. The PlayStation 4 is currently winning the console race while Microsoft's Xbox is left in the dust which makes me a tiny bit happy but that's only because I love Sony really love them Telltale's sixth episode of Game of Thrones is finally going to hit the market on November 17th this will be the conclusion of Telltale's interesting take on the IP it's a very solid game, although I have not played all of it, I have only played the first episode and I quite enjoy the fact that a lot of the characters in the TV series actually make cameos and have even fairly large roles in the story of House Forest and the house you take direct command of. The house you take direct command of. Right, on to the next piece of news. Talking about episodic games, I can't help but mention that Life is Strange's final episodes hit the streets, well, the streets, more like the Steens, get it, because it's on Steam. <laughs> yeah, so episode 5 finally concluded Max and Chloe's journey, and it did it in a pretty heart-wrenching fashion, with a lot of full-on horror moments and it was a great, very fantastic, well, it was a good experience. I was honestly say, go play it. It's really good. I would in fact say that if we, until this very moment, thought of Telltale Games as the leader in narrative-based movie-like games, well, Don't Not Entertainment actually beat them over the head with a trash can with the release of Life is Strange. It was really quite a solid game and it might quite very well be one of my top three games of the year. And that's no small feature in a year that has had some pretty strong releases. And now, some news from a lovely Japanese developer and publisher Square Enix. Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII is finally coming to Steam after fairly inferior ports in both Final Fantasy XIII and its sequel, Final Fantasy XIII II, will we get a port, a PC port, that can actually make the game enjoyable? In my personal experience, Final Fantasy Lightning Returns wasn't really that great. I actually pre-ordered the game and was so bored with it I didn't play a full hour. Maybe that's a mistake, maybe I shall someday go and rekindle the flames of my love for lightning. <coughs> but until that day comes, I think I will stick to waiting for Final Fantasy XV. Does anyone know when that game is coming out? They still haven't announced the release date. Oh, uh, isn't that sad? It really is, isn't it? Hmm. And last but not least, just in two days, on October 23rd, Warhammer End Times Vermintide is going to hit the streets and the Steams. Is that going to be a regular thing from now on? The Steams? No, I'm not using that. Scratch that. It's awful. Warhammer End Times Vermintide is a very good game. It's a multiplayer co-op game where you kill giant rats, or their equivalent going by the name of Skaven, which is the name that giant rats have in the Warhammer universe. It's a fantasy subdivision of Warhammer, it's not Warhammer 40k, and it is in the vein of games such as Killing Floor and Left 4 Dead, although less guns, more fire that spews death on your enemies. And that daily is very exciting indeed. Thank you for watching. That was fun, wasn't it? Lots of news, lots of exciting new things coming. Actually, are there? No, not really. I don't feel even a tiny bit excited. But hey, Far Cry 4 is coming. So, I can finally rest in peace and hide in a bunker and play it for 500 hours or 400. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.